This arc starts off with Luffy designing their official pirate flag, which Oda actually shows us how to draw in an earlier chapter. There's a few more examples you can draw and you can even draw your own. I knew four kids wasn't crazy. This feels like something you can see four kids doing on like a commercial break. Yo! They actually touch on a lot of things that I wasn't expecting. They showcased Usopp knowing how to accurately fire a cannonball, something that not everyone would know. And they also talked about scurvy, how fruit and vegetables expired, so it's difficult to maintain the required amount of vitamin C. I just didn't expect them to cover that this story. We really gotta think about how we can get the right amount of nutrients with very little food. Right! The ship needs a cook! I know just the place. This place is close to the Grand Line. Our destination is... Baratier! I thought it was Barity. It's not Barity. It's a ship restaurant. How has a restaurant managed to stay intact given the fact that it has like cannon holes and waiters who uh, attack their clients and so much property damage? Well, uh, if you can't get rid of the problem, you turn it into an attraction. Because apparently, some people come all the way over here just to see that. And if the food's good and the chef's good, I guess that's where we find the next member, Sanji. Which is a chef who feeds anyone who's hungry, regardless of who. But before that, Luffy's got to pay some property damage they've done, which, to be fair, they have apologized for. Luffy will gladly pay off that property damage, even if they're terrible at it. Honestly, you might be causing more property damage, more than anything. And then enters Pirate Craig, who begs for food and instantly recovers, only to attack Sanji, the only person in that restaurant who is willing to give him food. And Craig wants meals for their entire crew after they were destroyed trying to enter the Grand Line. Can I just say, what a tease! Like, we've been getting hints of just how dangerous the Grand Line could be. A pirate with 50 ships and over 100 men were so brutally butchered by one person that they had to retreat from the Grand Line? That one person is Hawkeye, the like greatest swordsman, which transitions into a perfect fight against Zoro. We get a lot of world building here. We learn just how much stronger and more dangerous the Grand Line is. We learn that of the four seas, East Blue, the one that we're in, is the calmest, which is why Hawkeye seems so strong in these parts, because like, technically, we're on easy mode right now. Even then, Zoro tries to fight him and is clearly outmatched by the smallest of daggers. And even then, I love that Luffy doesn't try to intervene or stop others from intervening, because that's not their fight, even in a life or death situation. And even though Zoro loses that fight against someone who is strong, Hawkeye doesn't kill him. He sees that ambition in Zoro and lets him live to meet another day at the top. And I love that. It kind of glimpses that maybe when Zoro is the strongest swordsman, because let's be honest, I don't think that they won't be, they'll like maybe be strong enough to take down a ship single-handedly. It's a very interesting glimpse into like the future power scaling. Okay, I, I gotta talk about this because the story of the Baratier is really beautiful. When Sanji was smaller, they got swept up in a giant storm and ended up stranded on an island with Captain Zeph. And throughout this entire process, they had to survive 85 days stranded without food. Zeph, desperate for food, giving all of the rations over to Sanji, cuts off his own leg. Well, uh, more like, <laughs> more like smashes it, which you shouldn't do. It's a lot more harmful than useful to do that in real life. But still, in this starving state, he mentions how amazing it would have been to have a restaurant just smack in the middle of the ocean. And so the Baratier, it was. Zeph being one of the few who managed to enter the Grand Line and come back without being overly traumatized like Craig's crew. Like, yep, that, that is ocean restaurant material. And it makes sense why Sanji would just hand out food to someone who's starving. They know firsthand what it's like to starve at sea. Even when they don't get paid for it, there are just like some things that are more valuable than gold. Along with just how dangerous a vast, empty, uncaring ocean can really be. But of course, uh, there's gotta be fights. Craig and their crew, now that they don't have a ship, want to take over the Baratier as their own. And they have a ton of crewmates entering the battle. They got this fire person who, uh, I don't even know how to describe this outfit. I am so glad there's visuals. 
just look at that thing. And while we see Luffy do a bit of the fighting, we see that Sanji also has a little bit of a beam kick too. I can see them being crewmate material. I can see Luffy just dragging them onto the ship. They've been fighting to keep the pirates off of the Baratier because, again, we're circling back to this. It's uh, Zeph's, the captain's treasure. Boom. I'm calling it now. Like, the One Piece has to be something weird, right? I know I'm like a thousand chapters late, all right? I, I hear people making noise about what's happening in current One Piece, but I'm not looking at it because guess what? I'm not there yet. I'm not going to go look at spoilers. I'm, I'm still in East Blue. So Sanji and Jin face off, and I love how Sanji uses their feet like a thing that they learned from Zeph. Well, Luffy fights Craig on the Baratier, and I love that there's actually a ship battle, quote unquote. And not only is it like a ship battle, but they're actually like using the ship. Like we see them uh, knock down the crow's nest and use it as a drawbridge. Uh, the Baratier also has these like fighting fins as to not damage the actual ship. And at one point, Luffy just smashes one of the fins to stop Craig. It is very dynamic. And after the brawl, Sanji mentions wanting to head over to the Grand Line in search of the All Blue, which is where all these oceans combine. And as Sanji talks about their dream, we and Zeph can just see their face light up. They are so passionate about wanting to achieve this goal. This arc draws like a lot of strong parallels between Sanji and Luffy. They were both rescued by pirates who crossed the Grand Line and in both of these situations, the pirates lost a limb while one of them uses that as a gift and intends to use it to propel themselves forward. The other has been stuck attempting to uh, repay that gift and unwilling to move on until it's paid. So they all push Sanji to accomplish their dreams and Sanji agrees to go. And so they prepare to set sail and oh, that's, that's right. Like during the entire fight, Nami, pirate robbing Nami, stole the going Mary. Like should have seen that coming. She did mention a while back wanting to buy a certain town. So I want to say she's robbing for a purpose, but dang, like you can't just rob another person's pirate ship. Wait, that was, that was the entire point of this arc. You don't steal another's cruise ship, Nami. All right, hopefully you like my ramblings. We're going to continue with Arlong Park next week. Uh, it's been a blast reading through this stuff. Feel free to read along and sob and follow along. You get the drill. You, you, know, you know what we're doing here. 